Hey everyone, Brian Bogner, Greg Towner here, and we this is a special uh, episode that we're doing uh, here for the podcast. This is not our normal one, but with all of the issues going on right now in the banking world and the questions that we're getting and the concerns, the media and the headlines and things like that, we thought it'd be good to talk for about 10 to 15 minutes here, give you our thoughts, hopefully bring some perspective uh, on that space. So let's dive right into it. Sound good, Greg? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. Good. So my first question is, is this really a legitimate banking crisis? You know, we see the headlines, crisis and banking, doom, boom, 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 doom and gloom and things like that. But is in fact this a real legitimate crisis going on here? Well, you know, we love to talk about the the, the media noise, so they they right. love the chance to use the word crisis. But, you know, it, it, it's not, but it had a chance to be. You know, I, I think you couldn't have ruled that out initially when this started to pop up in March and when everybody started to get worried about a handful of these banks and what was going on with them. Fortunately, you know, the different government agencies stepped in and, and kind of backstopped things, and we can get into that a little bit. But at this point, it's certainly nothing like the great financial crisis right. of, you know, well, right. about 15 years ago now. Right. Uh, you know, it, it could have evolved into something much worse, but I think the response thus far has been strong enough and, and quick enough so that we probably wouldn't use the word crisis, but that doesn't mean there hasn't been and, and can't still be some issues, of course. Right, right. Um, okay. Uh, well, then what let's can we break? Let's break it down. Then what is actually going on in the banking world right now? Like, why is it so challenging? Why did we see some banks fail? Like, what's what's happened? What's what's going on here? Yeah, and it is quite a bit different this time than back during the financial crisis. I mean, back then it was mostly about bad loans. I mean, I kept in mind that was the, the peak of the housing bubble, right? So they were making all these horrible loans to people that couldn't afford these, you know, hugely overpriced homes. And so they just add all this bad credit on their books. And right now, at least to that this point, it, it's much different. If we go back, you know, a couple of years ago, it was interest rates were basically zero, right? So people put their deposits in the bank. They got, you know, the bank had to pay them almost zero. And the, the bank took those that money and they, they wanted to invest it themselves. So they would, you know, buy bonds or loan it out. Well, when they were buying bonds, you know, they're buying quality bonds for the most part, treasuries, government agencies. They weren't taking big risks in that respect. Well, what they did was instead of, you know, without getting, without getting into too much jargon, they weren't matching their assets and liabilities. You know, they right, were going out right. too far. Right. And so then what happens is if, you know, interest rates went up and the bond values went down. And right. so now if they needed money to, to, to pay for those deposits, they would have to sell at a loss. So that was the big thing. They're having to pay more on their deposits, which is tough. There's more competition for that. And then, of course, you know, you've heard people talk for a while now about the inverted yield curve. I mean, that has mm -hmm. been a, some pressure on their earnings and, and will continue to be. That's more of a looking forward type of thing. But really is the fact that a handful of banks, at least it looks like a handful at this point, you know, kind of mismatched their assets and liabilities and took too much risk and were too aggressive in that response. But at least at this point, it doesn't look like there's a tremendous amount of, you know, bad loans in the terms of credit risk. Yeah. Do you, do you think there'll be uh, like a lot more banks failing than than what we've seen already? I mean, we have somewhere approaching 5,000 banks out there now, oh, wow. believe it or not. Yeah, which wow, is down yeah. quite a bit from a couple of decades ago. Sure. So even in good times, I mean, there's still some banks that are failing. So inevitably, yes, there will probably be more, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be just huge onslaught. And I think they'll keep trickling in over time. You know, the, the first ones that have occurred kind of had some things in common, you know, whether it was geographic, their typical mm -hmm. clients that they had, that sort of thing, you know, obviously the more aggressiveness we just talked about. So right. there could and probably will be some more, um, but I wouldn't expect something like we've seen in, in really bad periods in the past. And and one thing I'll mention is, you know, just to tie it in with the broader market briefly, we've talked about this before. If you go way back to the 80s, the savings and loan crisis, huge number of banks went under, Right. but actually the that's stock true. market doubled during that Double, period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, so, true. I mean, not that we're predicting that, but it just shows, you right. know, the two things don't have to be tied together negatively. Yeah. No, you're right. Back then, you're right. Savings and loan crisis, right? We had that early recession in the, in the early nineties there. And, um, but you know, all that kicked off, uh, you know, one of the greatest bull market runs ever, uh, uh, there. So, yeah. Um, that's good perspective. Um, do you think any of these banking issues might, you know, kind of tip the economy into a recession or or anything along those lines? 
Yeah, I mean, you know, first of all, of course, it's it's hard to isolate, you know, if we went into a recession, you know, it's hard to isolate oh, what caused it and say one thing. So, you know, that kind of caveat out of the way is, you know, we'll say right now, the, the economy actually seems to be improving a little bit. You know, we just had a really strong jobs number. Mm -hmm. I look at this, this uh, data that comes in the economic um, survey uh, of improvement, and that's really surprising investors right now or economists right now. And then one thing we've mentioned a lot is, you know, go back to last year, nearly 100% of economists thought we'd be in a recession by right. now. And right. not yeah. only are we not, but things are doing okay. Corporate earnings just came in better than expected. So, you know, can we still go into a recession? Of course. I mean, the recessions happen. Uh, will a slowness in banks contribute to that? You know, probably. But I don't think what we're seeing occur right now is going to, in and of itself, push us over the edge into mm -hmm. a recession. I mean, mm -hmm. as we look out later this year, you know, maybe there's some other factors, you know, the Fed's high rates, et cetera, mm -hmm. that influence that. But at the moment, things actually seem to be surprising to the upside, regardless mm -hmm. of this, yeah. you know, banking uh, crisis, so to speak. Yeah. Okay. Um, what are some things that can be done, whether government or whatever, to help calm some of the, some of the panic out there? Well, I mean, certainly we'd all love to see, or most of us would love to see the FDIC increase their their, their limits on, you know, cash mm -hmm. that they protect, you know, rates out to $250,000. Uh, we'd love to see them increase that, but unfortunately that most likely takes, you know, a congressional response, which, right. you know, we know how that <laughs> tough that <laughs> Good is. Good luck on that one, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it's basically been an implied, you know, increase in that. And, and that's one of the positives that has helped calm a, a potential panic is, you know, the government for all their good and bad, you know, stepped in fairly quickly with these bank issues mm -hmm. and thus far have had a consistent response. Yeah. There's basically been an implied, you know, they backstopped all the deposits. So there's been an implied mm -hmm. increase in the FDIC, but I think an official one would help, you know, prevent deposits from flowing out. Cause of course these days deposits, you know, click of your, you know, on your phone, you can move your deposits pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think a consistent response and an increase in that and then honestly, just just time will help things. And, and and what we mean by that is just, you know, when this first came out and the news first hit, everybody got really scared and, you know, the headlines all hit and like, oh my gosh, you know, you just shoot first, ask questions later, right? But as it happens more and more, it kind of becomes more, you know, back page news. And, and, and as long as it's not some huge company or something strange happens, I think time will help wound, you know, heal the wounds a little bit in this. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, we've been talking about a lot of, headwinds and dark clouds and yeah. bad news and things like that. I know one thing I've been telling a lot of my clients are, is that, you know, back in the great financial crisis, you know, back then, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, pretty much every depositor, right. And, and you know, that had a checking account, savings account, even on all, all those banks that failed back then, they were all made whole. And right. so nobody, nobody actually, and, and, and that crisis, you know, was, ginormous compared to what we're dealing with right now yeah. yet every depositor because i'm getting I mean, my, my mom called me the other day and was like hey do i need to pull my money out you know da, 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 i'm so worried um even back then every depositor you know was made were made whole on their money there so um so you know there is some silver lining here any other good news or anything uh positive here uh that um that you're seeing yeah i mean with the data that we look at you know of course we first when this first hit, we saw deposits flowing out of these banks, particularly that the smaller regional banks flowing to the to the biggest banks or to money markets and so forth. That rush of money coming out has really stabilized, it looks like. Mm -hmm. So you know, I think most of the people that wanted to pull money out of these small banks have already done so. Yeah. You know, loans, these banks are still, you know, doing loans at this point. It's definitely tightened. I mean, there's no question they've tightened that up. So it's at a slower rate. They're still willing to to loan money at some point. And then, you know, just we often bring it back to sentiment, right? Right. I think both in the stocks and in just the banking industry and the view of it, mm -hmm. sentiment got really negative. I mean, we saw that the, the banking stocks, you know, come down a huge amount and they kind of rebounded last week. I mean, we don't know what the bank stocks are going to do in the future, but I think it just showed some real negativity already built in. So perhaps a lot of the bad news is out. And as long as the government keeps their consistent response, um, you know, we, we think that the, the, the worst of a, a potential crisis can and probably has been averted at this point. Right. Awesome. Well, good. So um, if you listening to this uh, episode here have any questions at all 
about how this might pertain to you personally or your portfolio or your exposure or anything along those lines, pick up the phone, give us a call, um, shoot us an email, whatever you need to do. We'd be happy to talk this through you. Uh, and thank you so much for listening to this very, very special episode on uh, the banking issues that we're dealing with here. Until next time, Brian and Greg signing off and uh, we'll we'll see you soon. <laughs>